welcome back to my channel or if you're new here please join the family by clicking the red subscribe button and also don't forget to press the bell button so you will be notified every single time I post a video here on So Craptastic. Also, if you really want to help my channel out and get it recommended to the YouTubes, please click the thumbs up button. The goal is to get 10,000 thumbs up per video from now on to help my channel stay afloat in this big YouTube crisis that is going on right now. So I would really appreciate all the help that you guys can give. And now without further ado, let's Zentango! This is the third video in my The Art of Zen Tangle series here on So Craftastic. For those of you who are new here, if you missed the first two videos, I will link the playlist below so you can see what I doodled and drew on the very first pages of the book. There's a lot of cool exercises that include borders and squares and some crazy creatures. Getting into today's drawing, I am working on the flux page and you can pause this if you want to read how to do it, but Basically, with a Zen Tangle, you can do it any way that you want to. They're just giving you suggestions. It's supposed to be relaxing, and technically, you're not supposed to worry about making mistakes. That's why you generally want to use markers and pens as opposed to pencils, so you don't have to erase or don't feel the need to erase. So for the flux, you could see that I started at the bottom corner, and I'm just kind of making leafy, petally shapes. And they're coming from a central stem and just kind of going off to the right and left. And then once you feel that it's long enough, go ahead and put a top leaf on. I got the book from Barnes & Noble a couple years back, but I recently saw it at Michael's Craft Store. And you can probably get it from other places, probably Amazon, I would imagine. And the pens I'm using are Microns, and those are from Michael's. If you do go to the craft store and get this, I recommend that you use a 40% off coupon or whatever they are offering that week, and then you'll save a lot of money. Very, very simple, and you can add little ones around if you want to. I'm putting a dot in each one, and it kind of looks paisley when you do this, kind of like a yin yang or something from the 70s. I like that kind of groovy vintage vibe it gives off. So after the dots, I went in and drew a line in each one, almost all the way, and then I just kind of thicken the stem a bit and now for the background instead of wasting a lot of time and coloring that in solid black I'm doing scumbling very tight scumbling to make it appear a lot darker than the foreground if you're not familiar with scumbling all you have to do is just move your pen around the entire page without lifting it if you do lift it it's okay but just make it look like you haven't lifted it it's supposed to appear to be a continuous line this is one of my go-to background methods because it gives the drawing a bit of texture and contrast after I filled in the background of the bottom one, I of course moved up to the top and did that. I just want the two bunches of designs on the page to be almost mirror images. They of course have their differences, but they look very similar at first glance. After that, I wanted to add some color into the design, so I took my Prismacolor pencils. You can do any kind of colored pencils. You don't have to get super expensive ones. You can use Crayola or even dollar store ones if that's all you have and go ahead and just fill in the background with a ton of dots. I'm doing this because I saw it in the example and it looked pretty good, so I am doing just a bunch of dots, and let me tell you, this drawing took a very, very long time. I'm guessing three to four hours because I never really timed myself, but it took a while. So be prepared if you're trying to do something this detailed. I listened to music the whole time and it was very inspiring. You can see that with every color I change to, I try and blend it a little bit by going back over the previous dots with the second colored pencil color or the third one. So I blend the blue to the purple and then the purple to the lighter purple and so on and so forth all the way to the pink. The goal was to create a gradient but not make it look like a perfect gradient if that makes any sense. And once the background was complete, I decided to add in a little bit of black detailing in the form of small tiny flowers. I just felt like it needed some black in the middle to tie the two big blobs of black on the corners to tie them together and make it all flow as one. That's all for the flux, now let's move on to the next page and experiment with the flux variations. For this one, I'm not going to do a coverall with the page. I exerted a lot of energy on the last one and I'm just gonna tone it down a little bit. Sometimes less is more. So for this one, I'm taking the idea to use a circular frame and I am going to use a pencil this time because 
I want my circle to look nice, not gonna lie. I want it to look good. <laughs> so I just traced this mug candle that I made and then I drew the leaves inside already. You guys saw that in the first one, so I didn't need to record me doing it again. Also this time I want thicker lines, so I'm using my Crayola marker and I'm just going to outline everything as best as possible and then I let it dry for a while before going in and outlining the circle with a micron pen and I just made sure to go over that a couple times so it was wider. And then I went in with the dots of course and this time instead of doing lines I did a bunch of little dots. Also, we're revisiting the circle background, and we're not doing scumbling this time, just a bunch of circles in the background with a thinner black micron. Then I'm outlining with some ruffly lines, and I'm going around everything with a couple different colored pencil colors. Now, I want to ask you guys, what should I talk about during these videos? I don't know if you guys want me to explain the steps that I'm doing, or if that gets really boring, like you guys know what I'm doing, so I should talk about something else. So I don't know if you guys want instructions during the voiceover, or if you'd rather me do actual talking where I discuss some sort of topic that you guys come up with in every video, and it can be either Q&A or a specific topic like body image or anything. Seriously, it doesn't have to be related to drawing. It can be related to anything in your life that you're going through that you need inspiration for. Or if you guys want me to put more music and less talking. I am open to all your constructive criticism and suggestions. Just leave them in the comment section below. I finished that off with little tiny black dots all around and colored pencil dots at the very bottom. Now for the third and final drawing in this video, let's move on to the holly bow. Or is it holly bow? I don't even know. Unintentional rhyme. I like the idea of using really thick lines again, so I went back with my Crayola black marker and it smells like vanilla, so I was enjoying using this. I wanted to make more lines, but I just did what was necessary and I intersected them. I didn't use a pencil for this because they're just lines and I wanted them to be a little jagged and just kind of bendy, not perfect. In the previous drawing, I used a shape to create a frame for the Zentangle, but in this one, I'm using the Zentangle as a frame for the drawing I'm doing. Basically, I drew a shadow of hills and trees. It's a silhouette at night. I wanted to bring in a different element that is not a Zentangle at all, but since the Zentangle is surrounding it, I figure it still counts. After I filled that in, I'm taking various shades of blues and purples, and I'm going to create a sky and water. probably notice that I do a lot of underdrawing, which means that I'll press very lightly with the colors at first and just kind of scribble around with them. Then once I have it more defined, I'll put the colors in darker where I know I want them to be more prominent and then I'll work on blending. The white Prismacolor pencil is great for adding white back in. It actually does go over the other colors, which is great. And something that Crayolas don't do well in my opinion, because I used to use those a lot. And then I wanted to add more light spots, so I did take my eraser and I added more light blue because I felt like I didn't have enough in the sky at that point. And at the very end, I went in with a white gel pen and I added dots for stars. And I also will take the gel pen and just make a little line and 
dab it out with my finger, kind of rub it in. The only thing about using a gel pen on top of Prismacolors is that you can scratch it off if you try and it does come off pretty easily. So I am in search for something white that I can use on top of colored pencils and it won't come off. I mean acrylic paint might be an option but I really don't want to paint. Is there some sort of paint marker or something that you guys would recommend? I don't actually consider this to be a teaching video even though some of you may learn things from it. It's kind of just us learning together because I want to show you what I'm creating as opposed to try and teach you how to do art, just kind of more inspire you to do art. So I hope you enjoy seeing these sorts of things. I accidentally was super messy with the eraser, again very out of practice here. When I was erasing the colors I forgot that there was blue on the eraser so then I went to erase on the white part of the paper and I got colored pencil all over and it won't come off so I think it's stuck there. But a solution that I had for this one spot is just to fill in more of the sky instead and put more stars so that helped but there's still some messy areas. If you guys want to see more of these videos, of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will be doing the next three or four pages the next time I post a Zentangle installment video. So be looking forward to that and I hope to see you back. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up to let me know. Also you can follow me on social media, all my links are in the description box below. And also let me know what you think of my filming background. I switched to my gallery wall because one of you guys actually suggested that I do that. I think I like it. Hope to see you guys back here. Have a great rest of the day. Bye!